Okay, so allow me to introduce myself. I'll also be presenting. I'm Daniel Urda. Uh, I'm a GIS developer at for Census Software. So, and today I'll be presenting the way we integrated the Power BI in open layers in order to create some novel uh, visualization for big data. Okay, so first up, some words about my company. We are a Romanian company. We built a custom integrated solution for both business and uh, institutional uh, clients. Uh, our expertise is mostly with uh, proprietary software like Microsoft, but in the last few years we also have expanded toward uh, open source solutions, and we also have a dedicated mobile and JS departments. So, uh, let me start with the overview of my presentation. I'll first uh, present uh, Power BI for those uh, familiar with it, and we also the challenges we faced when integrating uh, open layers with Power BI. And I land just by presenting some demos, live demos for what we have developed. Okay, uh, so Power BI in JS. Uh, Power BI is the, it's a business analysis solu solution built by Microsoft, it's a proprietary solution. It allows users to easily explore and visualize data in a nice way, so it's very useful for business, for presentation, and things like that. And uh, most importantly, it now allows you to build custom visuals. So probably without the last point on my slide, I would admit this presentation. So the API is open. It allows everyone to contribute and then publish after being vetted by Microsoft in their store. Okay. So uh, what were, why we looked, uh, what we were searching for when we decided to develop a new visual. Uh, we already had some experience with Power BI. We had developed uh, some visuals for it. We have used it in our solutions. Um, and since we already have a uh, JS department, we decided how to integrate JS and Power BI. So our primary requirements was that any visual we develop was fully integrated in the Power BI environment. So it would look and feel like a native uh, part of Power BI. And since we were dealing with big data, we wanted the, uh, all uh, our reports to be conf easily configured. So the usual way we, you do it in Power BI is an editor just edits a report and configures and publishes it. This wasn't enough for us. We wanted uh, the configuration to be that, that data driven. So you just change the data and the report also changes. And <coughs> since uh, after we explored uh, creating this uh, visual, we also had a client, a big uh, UN institution, the World Health Organization, which had some very specific uh, requirements because they are a UN, they must be neutral. So we had to show all disputed areas and disputed borders. It was a hard requirement. Also because they have data that goes back to the 1950s, I think. They had to show all historical evolutions when the country appeared, disappeared. And also we had, the last one is, uh, was initially nice to have some eye candy, but then we found out that clients like it very much, so we had charts on top of maps. Uh, why we didn't use the current uh, capabilities of Power BI, there are two types of uh, visuals. There are native parts, the one developed by Microsoft, and other party of visuals. The native ones are quite limited in uh, support. They only uh, allow you to put points by coordinates, or otherwise you can geocode, but you have to use Bing's uh, geocoders and uh, if you want to show a feature that uh, Bing is not aware of, you cannot show it on the map. And of course, you had no custom geometries, so we couldn't show disputed areas and things like that. About third map, uh, third party map visuals, there are several of them, mostly from big companies. Uh, the issue with them is that if you want to use your custom geometry, you have to pay some subscription to them, and we didn't want to be dependent on that. We want to host on our own geometries, on our own uh, JS services. Uh, 
So we basically decided to create one from the scratch. Okay. So uh, about a bit about custom visuals map for Power BI. It, uh, you had to develop in TypeScript. It's a typed version of JavaScript. Uh, Stylic is done with less CS CSS. Fortunately, Microsoft allows you to use the Node for has provided or has provided some tools for compiling for configuring the uh, basic uh, custom visual that you develop on top. And since you use npm as a package manager, you can use most JavaScript libraries out there. So if they are published, uh, there you can use it. A restriction for custom visual is that uh, they all run in a sandbox iframe. If you are familiar with the browser security, a sandbox iframe has uh, limited access to native uh, API of the browser. And uh, you can, if you want to access remote resources, you have to configure your server in order to allow uh, course request without a domain name. Okay. So the building blocks, we didn't use many technologies. Uh, so besides OpenLayers, proj pro projections, and uh, D3 for the graphs on top of charts, we just used some polyfills. So it's mostly an open source stack besides the Power BI API, which is proprietary of Microsoft. So let's see how we dealt with the requirements I mentioned before. First, um, we had, uh, as, as, as I mentioned, we wanted the, the, our visual to be fully integrated. So, of, of course, we, it's easy with, with open layers to just create some nice map setup. is quite uh, simple. But we, had, we wanted it to look and feel exactly like a, a native visual. So, you have two examples. This is a very lightweight version of our visual. We had a the usual uh, open layers interface. It's not styled much, but uh, what it does is that it supports uh, the two types of uh, in Power BI interaction. Uh, Power BI support, uh, allows you first to interact uh, by uh, highlighting. So once you select on a graph one data point, it uh, highlights uh, all, this, all graphs in the same report. So our map does support that. So once you click on one country, all other graphs on that page are highlighted to show that country. And also the second mode, it's filtering. It is, uh, we are actually developed two uh, visuals that are look the same but have this distinct functionality because uh, the API doesn't currently allow you to switch from highlighting to filtering. Filtering simply means that you select one country and all other graphs uh, on that page show data just for that country. So it's not highlighting, it's just filtering. And of course, uh, in line with Power BI, you can uh, select, you have multiple selections. So here we selected Belgium, Austria, and Greece. Okay. And uh, this pretty much works like every other native Power BI uh, visual. Uh, regarding configuration, as I said, we wanted uh, uh, one <coughs> visual to do a lot of uh, custom uh, styling and things like that. Uh, usually, the native visuals have two or three fields. As you see, we have, I think, 18 fields. You can configure everything from the geometries, the data shown on pop-ups, the colors, uh, how the coloring is done, so uh, you have color plate or uh, categories. You can configure the language. We support the six UN languages because we worked for a UN institution. You can also decide the, the directly from the data the order in which the legend items come in the map legends. And also, as you see, you can uh, we also introduce a base map. Uh, you can change even the projection. It's the last options entirely from the data. So you would configure the report just once, and afterwards you just change the data, and the report changes. Okay. Uh, this is nice because uh, unlike other visuals that you you configure once, and the user, the end user, has no control. 
you can uh, use the built-in uh, functionality, the filters of Power BI, in order to allow uh, the end user to cu customize the way he views the map. So, for example, you can here the user can change the language, can change the uh, data shown, the year, and the, the even the geometries. So, here you can there's a global map that you can show on for one continent at a time. Uh, disputed borders, I said this was quite important for our client because they didn't want uh, disputes to arise, so controversy the, from the way they show maps. So we had some areas, just Western Sahara, that uh, it's an extra overlay of the, over the map. So whenever somebody hovers it or clicks over it, uh, the interaction is blocked, so it's just not applicable. Of course, in all six languages. Uh, also the same with borders. You see the, the different styling. Uh, the nice way with this is that uh, the both uh, borders and b boundaries are consumed from another, from a JS service, a remote JS service. So if uh, you want to change, some, some uh, disputes are solved. You just change the JS service. You don't have to reconfigure the report. So basically, it's that data driven. Okay. About historical evolution, as I said, uh, we had data from the 1950s up till I think we have estimates for the uh, 2050. So the usual gist way to do it is to use time-enabled services. But the problem is that time enabled uh, WMS, for example, it renders uh, data on the server. In Power BI, all data is rendered on the client. So we had to make uh, the geometries, we had to introduce an attribute that uh, indicates whether a country is uh, historical, like a Soviet Union, or present. So the historical countries are only shown if you have data for them. Otherwise, you see the present configuration. So. For example, uh, in the map above, you can see Western Germany and Soviet Union. And in the one below, you can see there are already all the parts, uh, the component parts uh, have split. But uh, for example, for Yugoslavia, uh, since you don't have data for it in 1989, you see the current borders, not the past borders. Because as I said, uh, the rendering is done in the client and we wouldn't know exactly what happened then. Okay, it is also, uh, this is probably the only hard-coded part, so there are some disputed borders that have appeared in time, so it was Sudan before 2011. <coughs> it split in 2011 and uh, there's still a disputed area, so this is probably the s single hard-coded part of our visual because we had these issues with Sudan. Okay, and the charts on display on top of the maps. This uh, also shows uh, the, the fact that we can use different geometries. You, you are not required to only use the word geometries, you can change it. So here you have uh, the charts out of Power BI. The, the pop-ups are integrated, so I have the same styling as uh, default charts. You also had the uh, in the legend with nice visual representation. And also here a show of, of uh, different projections. This is a custom uh, projection for showing Europe so that it's an equal area projection, I think. And uh, this projection is configured, uh, as I said, from the data. This is in, uh, in Arabic. If you notice the map has gone from uh, left to right to right to left in order to accommodate Arabic. Okay, Arabic in Europe is not that common, but just for sure. Okay, and a bonus we found lacking in open layers. Uh, we had many countries, for example, Russia, the United States, and Fiji, Samoa, that uh, crossed the 118 meridian. And when we zoomed into it, we just zoom into the full world map. So we had 
created uh, some algorithm that decides how to zoom by ignoring the meridians. So if you want to zoom, for example, I think New Zealand also has one island or two past the 180 meridian, you just actually look, uh, you see correctly the New Zealand, and they are not hard coded, so you can use any geometry and they'll still look right. Okay, so now uh, let's see some live demos. As my colleague Florinio Suk has prepared them for you, so. Hopefully it will open in the same window or not. Okay. So this is the default Power BI uh, interface that uh, uses our, the visual we have developed. It should be here once it loads. And uh, these other parts are mostly built-in uh, components. We, uh, there's uh, an also an open source uh, visual that we have used and improved in order to show uh, animation. But uh, that's not part of our uh, uh, visual, so only the map is our visual. You can change, as I said, since you it's data-driven, you can change the colors. And I think the language, for example, let's see it in uh, French. So it should be all the map is in French, including the legend. I think so. We have the disputed areas the disputed borders, and I'm not sure if you can change the geometry from this. Uh, can you change the geometry, Florin? No. no, in the other one, okay. <coughs> okay, let's return to the, uh, my mouse, where's my mouse? Here, and we have uh, sorry, okay, and it's another demo that uh, uses uh, that shows pie charts. This is a different geometry, and here. This is for, okay, so when you go, you have the legend here. You have one pop-up on the map and a different pop-up on the pie charts. Okay, so this is just like default uh, pop-ups. I don't know if it's named like it, okay. And here you can change the geometry, I think. Okay, so you want just by countries. Okay, so instead of uh, administrative units, you get for the whole countries, and also get by uh, change back to the geometries. If you notice, we still have the disputed areas because this should also be always be present, and you can uh, filtering. This is how filtering works. So you get I don't know if you want to only see some regions. You can change the colors. Uh, this is for no color blind. So you have a color blind. Okay, so here's a purple apparently. So it's highly configurable. You can you can either do it on the on your on your when you design your report, or you can expose the configuration of such the user. Okay, so that. And my presentation. If you have questions, okay. Uh,
start with you. Oh. Is it, yeah. is it an open source solution? Do you publish it on GitHub? Uh, we want to make it open source. Uh, we have an initial agreement from the UN institution, but uh, they have to pass through legal clearance before we can make it uh, open source. We hope we would be able to publish it on GitHub sometimes. So, so you also can sell it? We don't currently sell it, but I think we can sell it. I don't know. <laughs> it, uh, it's not me who can uh, provide this information. I'm just the developer. So. Okay, uh, in the back. Okay, thanks for your presentation. Uh, I was wondering, there, there has been a, a leaflet plugin for Power BI, I think, a few years ago. Have you? Uh, but you started in Open Layers. Was that the? Uh, I don't, uh, we first before starting, we just looked on the, I think there was a S3 plugin, a Mapbox plugin, but I don't remember a leaflet plugin. So okay. probably it is not published in the store. Or I don't know, but I just read a few lines about it. Perhaps somebody else knows about it. Uh, we, I, the, when we started one year ago, we couldn't find anything that could fit all of our requirements, so it would So there was another question. Uh, there, back. Uh, nice presentation, and thanks already. Um, maybe the last slide give it a bit the answer, but I'll try anyway. We are considering using Power BI and or Tableau, <laughs> because in a lot of cases, do you have any idea whether this kind of... Uh, oh, I'll, I'll let you search whatever you're searching. <laughs> Let me, okay. No, no, no worries. So do you have any idea whether uh, there are some kind of customization capabilities in Tableau too, or do you know nothing about Tableau? I saw the Microsoft partner, so I can understand the answer could be no. Uh, <laughs> no, we didn't. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Thanks. But prob I don't know if they have a custom API, probably we can do it, so it's not. I, I'm, I, I tried <laughs> seeing that we were. Okay. We are this kind of same kind of question, but thanks. Uh, it's okay. Any more questions? Okay, so finish it. Uh.